So if we start off with uh, securing the conduit system, so in this case, it's been a black enamel conduit system here. I made this about 18 years ago when I first came in to teach him. I'm gonna leave it behind, but it illustrates the different styles of fixing for a conduit. And under an old city and guilds exam, it used to suggest why you would use each of the fixings here of these four. So we're gonna still run through that. I still talk about that in my lessons previously um, when I was teaching at Tresham College itself. So what we've got here then, I'll try and keep it in camera. So I'll try and keep it in shot. So what we've got here is from uh, bottom to top, different fixings. And the fixings mean how close it is to the surface. In each case, obviously it's a piece of wood, but there is a reason why we would be using each of these. So we've got, in this case here, just a plain saddle. So it's just really effectively the front of a saddle. They're all saddles, but all different types. This is a plain saddle. And the thinking behind that, maybe move it around this way, thinking behind that was it kept it very close to the surface. And the exam question in the old days used to say, when would you use a plain saddle? A plain saddle would be used when you're on a smooth surface like wood. So that's a plain saddle there. So we move along to this one here. This one here is a traditional saddle. Here's a galvanized version of it. Okay, this one being black enamel. So that's a spacer bar saddle. You undo the two little screws on the front those two screws and the saddle front comes off, you secure the back of it, so you secure the back plate onto the actual surface and then tighten the two screws up when you drop it on, so we're using the workshop. So we've got a spacer bar saddle here. So what's the reason behind using a spacer bar saddle? It raises it slightly further off the surface. The reason behind that, according to an old exam question, was where you had irregular brickwork. In other words, a brick wall will never be perfectly smooth. To allow for irregularities in it, you'd use a spacer bar saddle. Moving along to the third one, this is now bridged it even further off the surface, so we're a little bit further off now. This is a distance saddle. Okay, so you can see that it's a lot higher off the actual surface itself, the distance saddle. The distance saddle would be used where the wall is damp, so it creates a larger gap here, meaning a film of water wouldn't sit in here. So in order to bridge it off a damp surface, the old exam questions used to say you would use a distance saddle. And the very last one here has got the biggest gap. You see, I clearly can get my finger under the conduit itself. And this saddle here is called a hospital saddle. It's slightly different in shape. It's certainly raised further up and you'd be expected to identify these in exam by pictures and making sure you can see it sprays out the ends here. They exaggerated on the actual exam question. This is a hospital saddle. So what's the thinking behind that? My students usually say, well, it's in a hospital. Well, that's not the case because when I walk down the corridor to find the Costa Coffee in a hospital, I don't see the conduits in the corridor secured using hospital saddles, but they are used in parts of hospitals. So areas of high hygiene, maybe in the medical theater, maybe in the mortuary, uh, maybe in the canteen areas, that you'd need a saddle that bridges it off fur enough in order to allow a cloth to go underneath in order to clean the conduit itself. I wouldn't recommend the conduit in a high hygiene area was this style of black enamel, but we would be the thinking behind it is that in order to bridge it off further, we would use a hospital saddle for areas of high hygiene, food manufacturing, etc. So there are four common fixings. So if we turn it around this way, we've got plain saddle, smooth surfaces, spacer bar saddle, irregular brickwork, distance saddle, where the wall or surface is damp, and then at the bottom, hospital saddle for areas of high hygiene. We'll also talk about the crampet. We'll talk about that one in the classroom as well and where we use that, as well as a girder clip. But the four common saddles are the ones I need us to remember in this part of the presentation. So let's put that back down. Conduit finishes, this conduit finish here, this conduit finish here is black enamel, very, very rare. When I first started teaching 18 years ago, all the conduit systems that I put in were in the workshop in black enamel. It is a steel pipe covered in black glossy paint, and you might not be able to see, but over the years, that paint has started to remove and it's actually pitted out, it's started to corrode. So with the conduit system, black enamel, whenever you scuff it, you must be repaint it in order to prevent corrosion. So that's black enamel. We've got the commonest conduit now that we tend to use, and we use it inside and out, but the exam questions, we'll talk about it for other reasons. This is zinc galvanized. It's not galvanized conduit, it's galvanized with zinc, and the exam questions will say, in order to prevent corrosion of a conduit system, what do you do? You add zinc to it in a zinc galvanizing process. So we've got black enamel, zinc galvanized. The third one on the table here, it almost looks like chrome, it isn't. It's stainless steel, stainless steel conduit, quite expensive, 
Again, this would be used in areas of high hygiene, in food uh, manufacturing and processes, uh, where there's a lot of cleaning down of the actual system itself. So we'd be washing this down regularly. We'd be using it in those areas. We'd be using stainless steel. There is a fourth one in my note called sheridized. Sheridized is similar to the galvanized, but the zinc is actually impregnated within the actual um, steel itself and not just coated on the surface. We'll cover that in the classroom. That would be sheridized. So black enamel conduit, we'd use that inside in dry environments, according to the exam questions, very rarely used now. When would we choose zinc galvanized? We choose it where the area is damp or maybe on the outside of a building, but certainly not on the outside of a building somewhere like um, the seafront at Blackpool, because obviously the salt air would be corrosive even to the galvanized. That's maybe where sheridized comes in and we'll cover that in the classroom. And again, stainless steel, we'd use that in areas of high hygiene, that's food processing factories, etc. So there are three common, sheridized being the next one up. Uh, we've got two different types. Um, what are we gonna see on that one? Maybe not too easy on that one. Let's see if that one, right. I'm hoping now you'll be able to see, if you can't see it now, you'll see it in the classroom. There is a line that runs down the inside of here. It's probably about there, that's a line. If you can't see it, you'll be seeing it in the classroom. If not, if you're not in one of um, the treasure lessons, have a look in the end of your conduit and you should see a line running down it. That's because this is seam welded. So in other words, it was a, a flat piece of metal rolled into a tube and welded. And that's the most common. So the most common type is seam welded steel conduit. They do do a solid drawn one. Solid drawn one wouldn't have the line coming down it. It'd be pulled or extruded from uh, one piece of material so it would have no line. So what's the difference? Just quickly for this video, it'll be explained more in the classroom. If you needed a gas tight installation, one where there's atmospheric gases like uh, fine particles of uh, powder, fine particles of paint, okay, or vapor, in order that then systems don't have um, the gases penetrate through the conduit, which they will on the seam welded type, in order to make a gas tight installation, use solid drawn. We'll explain that a little bit more in my notes and in the classroom. So just remember two different types, seam welded, solid drawn. You're very, very likely to be only using seam welded, especially in a college environment. Conduit lengths, uh, any of these here, so stainless steel, black enamel, and zinc galvanized come in a standard length. Bit controversial now. Over the times they've changed that standard length. It used to be that steel conduit was the exception to the rule. A full length of steel conduit used to be 3.75 meters, old 12 foot. Actually, as time has evolved, uh, electricians have said, well, we can't get those in the tubes on top of our van. So they've actually reduced down the full length now to three meters. Be careful. The questions that I've got in the eFix Apprentice Hub, there's about 1,200 and there's about 600 in the installation theory section to help you with your exams. I still state in there that steel conduit comes in 3.75 meters until it becomes the absolute norm. It's a three meter length. I'm gonna leave that question as it is. So just remember, a full length of steel conduit is probably now three meters when you get it from electrical wholesalers. It used to be 3.75 meters. So we'll just name a couple of the other accessories. We've got couplers, okay, we've got couplers. We've got uh, female bushes, okay, and we've got lock rings. Uh, I've got a male bush on the table, so I'll just see if I can find one of those. So I've got a, I've got a male bush, okay, so that's a male bush, and this is a female bush, and we'll be using both of those in the exercises I've laid out in the workshop in order to connect, say, to a coupler, okay, we'd have a box in here and we'd cut um, time between the two. We've got lock rings and lock nuts. We've got different types of accessory. So in this case, you can see we've got a black enamel and a galvanized box. This is uh, often called on site an end box. It's actually a terminal or a termination box is the proper term, but of course we all call them end boxes. They've got a pre-threaded uh, spout. So in other words, the conduit itself would be threaded like this one here, conduit would be threaded and goes into the spout itself and then would be tightened off. So you'd wind it into here, tighten that off, okay, in order to make the connection, in order to get into a coupler, there's a thread in there as well. Okay, so you just wind it onto there, make sure it goes on tight, and then that would be connecting those together. Conduit itself comes in different sizes. The size being the actual diameter, not the area, the diameter of the conduit itself. The four common sizes, so I find it difficult to say every time I say it, 16 is allegedly a common size. So it's 16, this isn't, this is 20, 25, which this one is, and 32. So you've got to remember the four common sizes of steel conduit are 60 millimeter, 20 millimeter, 25 millimeter, and 32. We're talking about the diameter of the conduit. I'll just throw the next one in. 
next one in is the bending radius. Um, we'll talk about that in the classroom, it's in my notes. The bending radius of this conduit um, is a multiplication of the diameter. So the diameter in this case being 20, you have to multiply that by 2.5, that gives you 50. You'd set 50 into your compass, draw yourself a circle, and that would give you the radius. I've done a video on how to do bending radiuses of twin and CPC, steel arm, and mineral insulated, etc. Use exactly the same process, but it's the multiplication of the diameter of the conduit by 2.5. Couple of other boxes. We've got the we've got a, a T box. We've got a back entry or looping box, and this is a four terminal one. They obviously do other ones with less holes, so like a one terminal or one uh, hole looping box, and things like angle boxes. We'll go on on my notes to talk about things like tangent boxes and where we use them, etc. This is just a whistle stop tour of um, steel conduit. I'll do the same on plastic conduit to link to the notes that I've got. So let's have some key features to remember. Four common sizes, 16 mil, 20 mil, 25 and 32. Standard 3.75, maybe three length of conduit. The fixings themselves come in this way. Hospital, distance, spacer bar, plane. Smooth surfaces for plain, irregular brickwork for spacer bar, damp surfaces for a distance, hospital saddle for areas of high hygiene. The finishes themselves, black enamel, zinc galvanized, stainless steel, and sheridized being one of the others. So that's a whistle stop tour of some of the stuff that we will do within the notes uh, that I've produced for Tresham College. Remember, those notes can be passed out. Feel free to contact eFix and look at the Apprentice Hub and maybe even nominate your college for an eFix uh, visit from me and Joe and we'll happily come down to your college and I can uh, pass on any information that your lecturers or the learners need. So for this whistle stop tour of uh, conduit, and in this case metal conduit, I hope this video has been some help.